So I'm saying, if you know someone who was in the industrial complex, military, corporate, or otherwise, send them this shit, man. They should be on the way to becoming corporate cowboys already. Feel me? I, I, I don't need anybody to tell me I'm a piece of shit. I'm already disillusioned. I'm, I'm already in the trenches. I've, I've been putting in work, right? So when I have a little moment to breathe, I come in, I do a podcast, vent a little bit, make a cathartic, give y'all a piece of my mind. Hopefully y'all take it and run with it. Because the more individuals there are doing this in corporate, the better corporate is for it. And the better corporate is for us. Otherwise what? Us individuals are just going to get steamrolled the fuck over? Nah, nah. You have to learn how to get the fuck out of the way, how to sidestep, and how to make your own moves. That's, that's the inception. That's the whole concept of being a corporate cowboy. It's derived from being a cocaine cowboy. And those motherfuckers were agents. They were agents from uh, your little three-letter agencies. The ones that deal with firearms and the ones that deal with controlled substances. They ain't that controlled. Obviously, if you have agents inside able to get access or, or, or able to apportion themselves a little piece of that load of coke coming into the states and able to push it on the streets for themselves on some fucking corporate cowboy shit, you can do it in any industry, any field. This game is for everyone. It's rated E for everyone. Obviously, you have to know what you're getting into. I mean, you can't just impose it on people who don't have their eyes open. They have to know what they're doing. It's a whole other realm. It's a whole other league. I mean, we're still in the same dimension in the third or the fourth or however you want to quantify it. We're here now, today. Oh, well, today's Saturday, January 29th, 2021. And we're all still here playing the same game. Just some motherfuckers don't know the rules. Some motherfuckers don't know that there are rules. And the rules aren't even necessarily to like restrict you or, or constrict you into a, a, a predetermined set of moves. You can damn near make them up as you go along. And so long as you aren't unduly fucking over somebody, so long as you aren't fucking someone over unjustifiably, unjustly, without adequate justification. Like, <laughs> like if you have to be, like if you have to be a judge at the end of the day, right? And your actions have to be reconciled with your motives. You better have a damn good motive. If it's just fucking over somebody to get over for your own sake, out of your own personal interest to benefit yourself only, nah, man, you're going to get buried. You're, you're going to get smoked. You're going to get buried. And this might feel like a personal attack to some people at the quote-unquote top. But the motherfuckers at the top, quote-unquote, they just don't recognize who runs the bottom. And it ain't them. It's not them. Why? Because those motherfuckers forgot that they are still at the bottom. That's called being delusional. It's the opposite of what I am, essentially. I'm disillusioned. I know where the fuck we are. Everybody. I know where everybody stands. And I've been saying it episode after episode. It's entry level forever. Even the top dogs can get murdered out. Politically, I'm sorry. 
professionally. I'm sorry. Allegedly. I'm sorry. (laughs) Obviously, this podcast doesn't condone physical violence and does not constitute legal advice. So messages you do send me, letters you do send me, I don't want to hear, you know, tales about what you did. Obviously, it's cool if you send me, you know, little third person stories about situations you may or may not have been involved in. But I need to know that you're clean, right? I need to know. I need to. I want to know that you came out clean and that you are clean. Obviously, anyone who associates with you, anyone you associate with ought to be clean. Otherwise, you got yourself a dirty outfit. Otherwise, you got yourself a a, a little dirty crew. And those aren't people you want to write to or write about. (laughs) That's not to say that they aren't around, right? That's not to say that they aren't around. But you got to be selective. You got to be discriminatory about who you can address and what you can speak on. You got to be careful. You got to move cautiously. You have to move decisively. And it all comes back to you in the end. Why? Because you're going to be the one who has to answer for not only your actions, your actions, But those actions, not committed, (laughs) but those actions perpetrated, perpetrated? Those actions done or conducted by your crew, by those associated closest to you, right? So if you have a bunch of corporate cowboys, but you don't know where they stand uh, morally, right? If you don't know where they stand morally, you might be liable to answer to some actions that you might not have condoned, that you might not have thought were in the best interest of your association, of your network. Just like these motherfuckers in the in the agencies had to disavow the agents. Oh no, we were oh uh, no, we were never fucking selling coke. We were never pushing and hustling and dealing and murdering and robbing. Right, no, we were never gangsters. We were just thugged a little bit. We just thugged. I'm not a gangster. I just thug a lot. So I say, right? <laughs> Give me a fucking break, bro. Give me a fucking break. Over here acting like you don't know your organization is dirty. Hey, hey, kudos to you, props to you, props to the most high in that organizational chart. And that's probably what the the head or the fucking senior advisor, whoever the fuck is the chief of whatever agency props, props, because that is what plausible deniability is for. Right. That is what plausibility did that. That is what plausible deniability is for. But at the end of the day. If your bitch card gets pulled and you deny being a bitch, you're going to get smoked, bro. You're going to get checked. You're going to get checked and you're going to get tossed. (laughs) It's the way of life. It's the way of corporate. Either you double down or you cash out. (laughs) Oh, shit. And it's a lovely weekend. Don't get me wrong. I'm busy as a motherfucker. I got. I have to take a little bit of time away to vent, a little bit of time to get in touch, to tap in to my emotion, and and be able to handle and manipulate this shit like hot coals, right? Otherwise, if I just keep it sealed in and bottled up, motherfuckers will never know what's happening under the surface. These episodes would never get published. But you have to know, corporate isn't this soulless, emotionless creature, right? There's mother, it's just, 
a, a set group of motherfuckers who move in cold, calculating ways where emotion takes a back seat. But it's not that they're never present. It's not that people don't take emotion into consideration when they have options and alternatives, a set of choices to make. Emotion is always there. Shit. Life runs on emotion. What makes you feel good? What makes you feel bad? And ultimately, emotions sell. It ain't even, it ain't even sex that sells. Motherfucking drugs sell themselves, pretty much. It's probably why I never got into pimping, right? I wasn't, picture, imagine this. I wasn't even that much of a people person growing up. I wanted the easy way, the easy way through. And that was what? Drugs? Because drugs sold themselves? All you had to do was stay put and customers came to you. I had to keep inventory, re-up, that's, you know, buying and selling. That's just product arbitrage, essentially. Buy low, sell high. Every now and then, you might have to take a cut to market in order to market yourself and have a reputation. Oh, this motherfucker got the cheapest on the block and it hits. It's just dope, fire, dank. Motherfucker selling gas on the low. Okay, cool, cool. But then you have folks who decide to, to step up their involvement a notch and they deal with people, right? Some individuals... Some people call it trafficking. Shit. Corporate is, is just a more formal way of trafficking. I would say it's more legitimate, but let's face it. It's just more formal. It's just cleaner. Not even cleaner, like I said. Some of the shit is dirty as fuck. It's just been moved into the gray. It's more questionable. Whereas what people do before on the street, on the block, in the hood, it's obviously illicit, right? It's illegal by the letter of the law. I'm not saying it's outright bad because some people need a manager. Some people need a, 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 an administrator in their life. Maybe they can't handle their finances. Maybe they're out selling their body and they don't know what to do when they turn around and they got all this money. They don't know how to manage it. So maybe they need a manager. Hey, hey. For every... If if we're talking about the fabric of life, for every ripped and torn motherfucker, there's somebody out there who is just as undone and unstitched, right? And together, hey, two and two make one. Funny how that works, right? You would think one and one makes two. Two and two make one, sometimes. Come together for a common purpose come together for a common cause, common values, a common mission, multiple individuals coming together in the form of a corporation. Oh, okay. All right. There you go. There you go. It's corporate. It's just not formalized, right? It's just not, not quote unquote official and legitimate. They weren't filing paperwork with the security, uh, with the secretary of state and making shit lawful. They ain't filing taxes, statements of information. They, you know, they aren't keeping up to date with the state, let's say. And that's why the, the state gov, I mean, it's a corporation in and of itself, right? Government is also a corporation, but they feel entitled to, to demand answers. They feel, right? They run on emotion. They, they feel as if they have the authority. What? Because it, it says it on, 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 their, on their resume. It says it on their fucking, <laughs> on their fucking CV. I'm supposed, to, I'm supposed to do what? Worship? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I could get, I could get, uh, uh, what is it? <laughs> 
I could get badges pressed up. I could get credentials printed out and laminated too. I could form my own corporation with a corporate seal, a logo, keep a minutes book with bylaws and fucking and and, and a whole charter, baby. I you feel me? I could be states adjacent. Which, you know, a little foreshadowing, that's the direction corporate cowboys is headed in. All powered by incorporating associates, mind you. So being state adjacent. Alex, what the fuck is that? Is that you versus the state? No, no, no. It's an outgrowth. It's corporate growing out of the state. Outgrowing the state. Why? Because the state is slow. I mean, shit, corporate is slow. Individuals are quick as fuck. Individuals are agile. Individuals are flexible. That's, I mean, that's why individuals get suppressed the most. The individual is the most oppressed demographic in the world. Obviously, they aren't minorities. There are way more individual people, natural persons, of flesh and blood, living and breathing, way more people than there are registered corporations, registered business entities. It's corporate that's the minority. But hey, corporate just has a much more ruthless mode of organization, much more ruthless mode of operation. Their modus operandi is aggressive. That's how they've been able to set the bounds to what the playground effectively looks like. To what, to what this whole pool of business looks like. And still, to some individuals, to some very capable professionals, those, those corporate cowboys who are conscious of their role in life, this shit looks like a kiddie pool, man. This shit looks like a kiddie pool. What we're having to do out here is, you know, bide our time a little bit, but grow. Still grow and develop ourselves. I would say something akin to a shark, where, you know, there's whales out there, Fortune 500, big old blue chip, blue chip, blue whales out there, right? We're sharks, in essence. But let me rule it back in, obviously, because we're not animals, right? We're not all animals by nature. There's some psychopathic motherfuckers out there who, who, really, who really believe that they got a spirit animal. But, I mean, once you believe you got a spirit animal, you lock yourself into a predetermined order of behavior, of, of, of actions. So that's why when motherfuckers say like, oh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a snake or I'm a shark. Niggas, sh- motherfuckers eat shark fin soup. Don't get it twisted. Mother- <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's whole eagles on, on flags and, and, and banners and logos tearing up snakes. That's nothing. That's nothing. Don't get it twisted. You're human at the end of the day. You breathe and you bleed the same color blood as I do. And if you believe any different, see, I was about to rhyme with something that rhymes like you. But then that'd be an an alleged threat, right? And I'm not really trying to get risk getting banned. The organization, nor myself, advocates for physical violence, right? Physical violence is the last resort. And while it is frequently occurring, frequently reoccurring, it should be left as an ultimate option, okay? As as a penultimate option, because the ultimate option is to do oneself, is is to, uh, um, to let oneself down. Frankly, that should never be an option. It should never be an option. But, you know, when, uh, when in that 
space and when in that time, when in that time and when in that place, hey, you got to handle your business. You got to handle your own business. You got to take care of your own business and business ought to take care of you. You can read between the lines on that one. If you haven't noticed, the Instagram page is uh, effectively shadow banned. We haven't been able to post shit for days. The Patreon is still up. You can subscribe. It's a monthly deal. Going to create some additional tiers there for people who uh, are are committed to donating. And they could do so for less than $600. Now, let's say less than $500 a year because obviously we ain't trying to report dick. To the government. (laughs) You want to send a donation. Just straight up a one time deal. One time thing. There's a PayPal link somewhere. There's a cash app. There's a Venmo link out there also. We're in the process of getting the podcast. Distributed to other outlets. So it's accessible. We weren't planning on. Hedging or, or, or putting all of our. Energy into Instagram. Or Facebook, mind you, because we've already been banned off of Facebook. But we weren't planning to put our eggs all into IG's basket, right? Because, let's face it, they're handing out shadow bans and they're handing out community strikes like it's motherfucking, uh, well, like they're motherfucking community strikes. I mean, (laughs) the only thing IG is good at. They, they, They aren't good at filtering content. They aren't good at, like, Keeping, uh, uh, you know, despicable, shady, uh, just, just despicable garbage off the platform. But hey, if you have an opinion, if you have a, a hot opinion, a controversial, not even a controversial opinion, because this ain't, it's not controversial, it's just hot. It's hot, it's radioactive, like I said. This is fucking coals, hot coals, red hot. Motherfuckers need of gloves to be carrying the shit. So when it comes across the the IG feed, some motherfuckers get hurt. I don't know. Maybe it's too bright for their eyes. Maybe it's too heavy for their mind. I'm not handing out fucking... I'm not handing out anything that isn't already known. That isn't... That isn't unknown. Folks been knowing this. The shit is essential. The, the, the shit is existential. Sometimes you just need somebody to uh, to phrase it in a way to have you realize that the shit isn't a game. That this shit is real life. After after you're done graduate, after you graduate high school, the shit is real life. And for some, it's even earlier. They choose to drop out. They get emancipated. Folks, I'm. Like 30 years old. I'm in my 30s. And I'm still thinking about the actions I took immediately after high school and how they've impacted where I am now. And you know what I've learned? I've grown a bunch. I've developed a lot. But I learned that in high school, it was one of the easiest times I had in my life. I had all the free time. All the free time to develop myself, pick up a book, do something worthwhile. And instead, what do you think I did? I mentioned it earlier in the, in the episode. I wanted quick cash. I wanted quick cash. I took that cocaine cowboys thing to heart. It wasn't until later that I realized that the that, that coke or weed or drugs... They aren't the only products out there. People are products also. Groups of people are whole markets. And you can sell (laughs) a hot, hot take. You can buy and sell whole markets. And that's what the government is doing. That's what corporate is doing. And, And that... Not entirely physically, right? But with your metadata, your metadata, however you want to pronounce it, with your digital information, treat y'all 
Like stock, like actual livestock, like cattle. Buying and trading. Selling and pawning lives, entire lives. And, and, and each and every one of us has a, has a dollar figure attached to us. But you know what the beautiful thing about life is? Is that that shit isn't fixed. It's not a fixed amount. I mean, to government it is because, like I mentioned, government moves slow as fuck. So by the time they get around to actually auditing and evaluating that figure that they put on my head, it's too late, baby. I changed it up on you. Good luck. (laughs) Good luck. Because as a human, as people, as individuals, with the spirit of innovation... With the power to be creative. We can apply or add value to our own life as well as others. That's your network. That's your organization. That's your crew. That's how you want to move. That's how you want to move. Now, this may or may not be, this may or may not turn out to be some rags to riches story, right? Because I'm always on the move. I'm always handling something. Always. If you're sitting still, you're a fucking mark. If you're sitting still, you're you're not even a moving target because you're sitting still. (laughs) It's like, come on, man. Fucking reality check. Check yourself. Check yourself before you fucking wreck yourself. You have to do it moving. Have to do it moving. Otherwise, what can you give me? The, 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 the meme, the meme five, ten years ago was, oh, I don't get why I should have learned math when selling drugs taught me the metric system. I'm over here selling eighths, quarters, and halves. and sh- Get the fuck out of here, bro. It's beyond that. It's bigger than that now. It's bigger than that. It involves not only selling product, but having the skill to sell. Having the skill to motivate and inspire. You do have to work with people. And together, you can materialize product from thin air. From thin air. From the ether. You have an idea, it's a good idea, it's a bright idea to change some business process to create a new organization. I mean, you know, message, it's message, it's what I'm fucking doing here. That's what myself and my cohort is doing here to make the process better, to make business better, to make people better, to make corporate shake to shake up corporate I mean this shit is easy it's easy it just takes a lot of legwork and it takes a lot of convincing yourself on your own part because from the outside hold on how how can I phrase this from the outside I want to make it look easy from the outside I want to make it look fun But there are some, like I mentioned before, and it's not to knock anyone, there are some individuals who just can't capture the process or the steps needed to get there. They need a manager, right? They need an administrator, right? They need a leader, right? And I'm not saying that they're lazy, that they won't do the legwork, that they need somebody to check them and regulate them and, 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 you know, put them in line, get them in line so that, so that they're in lockstep with the mission. That isn't even entirely necessary. I do believe most everyone can be inspired. Most everyone can be called out into some form of action. Why? Because and, and and this is the catch. If you're already if you're listening to this, you're already in corporate. 
If you're listening to this, you already belong to corporate. That's what's funny. If, if you're listening to this, doesn't matter what you're listening to it on. It could be an MP3, an MP4. It could be your phone, a laptop, a computer. Fucking if they've pressed it into vinyl by now. Just know that you belong to corporate. Just as much as corporate belongs to us. That, that is a coming to God moment. That right there is where you choose to move in a righteous manner or whether you choose to stay put, whether you choose to stay still, whether you choose to get hit and wet up for not moving either the fuck out of the way or moving ahead. But you have to be creative. You have to be active. You have to be innovative. Obviously, that comes with uh, some social skill. So you have to develop yourself personally. You have to develop yourself professionally. So that you can, in turn, develop an organization. Your own organization. Your own association. Your own network. You want to lead leaders. You don't always want followers. Just like you don't always want to be a follower. There are some instances, there are some projects, some, you know, some operations and initiatives that come up that require some people to take on a support role. And you might have someone in mind that always fills that role for you. And they might be comfortable with it. I mean, those folks are dependable. And if you can trust them to carry that weight, if you can trust them to put in that kind of work with consistency, I don't see anything wrong with it, right? Because like I said, some folks need an administrator in their life. Some folks need a manager. Some folks do need a leader. But at least they're cognizant of it. At least they, they acknowledge that they, that, that they need it and they know that they form a good complement to whatever else or, or a supplement. Maybe it's something additional that they do because they might be a, a leader in another sphere of their life. They might be a, a leader in another area of their life, right? It could be private or public. But a lot of folks also are in positions of leadership and aren't leaders at all. Some of these motherfuckers have titles by their name. Some of these motherfuckers don't recognize and don't understand what it means to be in corporate, what it means to be human, a human inside of a corporation. Some of these motherfuckers don't understand what it means to be entry level forever. That's where the gift of gab comes from. That's where having the social skill to be a hustler, to be a wordsmith, to be a manipulator of ideologies. That's where that comes in. Whether or not I rise to the top, you know, whether or not I continue to be the the to, to, to be the face, not even the face, you don't know what the fuck I look like. But if I could to be to be the masked up, the 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 masked up thug for corporate cowboys, or the voice or the representative, what have you, whether or not I continue to be that, just know. Just know that behind the scenes, I'm active, baby. I'm working out here. If we ever cross paths. It's because I wanted it to happen. If we <laughs> Honestly, it should go both ways, right? And 
it just so happens to be my job, my self-imposed job to shake hands, make people feel good, plant ideas with that skeleton key from season one, episode one. So use my skeleton key, my fucking lock pick of a social toolbox to plant ideas. It's like damn near inception, really. To plant the idea and make it seem as if it were their own. Shake hands and have them thank me. Honestly, I'm thanking them the entire way because all I had to do was talk. I love to talk. I love it. I don't always enjoy having to resort, you know, to to ultimatums, to uh, the, the, the ultimate option. <laughs> I don't always love it, right? Sometimes I do. Sometimes it's very well justified. It's, you know, very righteous, very satisfying, very cathartic. And it's not at all violent. It comes from a place of love. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes love, love can be expressed in a, in a manner where others perceive it to be uh, hate or a personal attack, right? Hey, it happens. It happens. But motherfuckers could get offended and, and motherfuckers could feel hate emanating off of any message if they want. Like if I walk into a room and, you know, I, I nod my head up and say, what's up? Half of the room might be like, oh, that's Alex. What's popping? What's cracking? Other half of the room might be like, oh, shit, that's Alex. What do they want? What, what, what the fuck? Well, there's beef. There's an issue. I don't like the way he threw his head back like that. I don't like the way he, he said, what's up, in that tone. You feel me? A lot of it takes, um, yeah, just, just, just being aware being aware of your presentation, what you look like on the inside, what you look like on the outside, what you feel like on the inside, and then how you express it to individuals on the outside. And it starts from the top to the bottom. You don't even have, you don't have to be fucking a, a, a 10 out of 10 symmetrical face, have an ass, six, three motherfucker, right? It's vibes. It's vibes, it's energy, it's a mindset, it's a mindset of flexibility, adaptability, agility, it's mental, it's mental. And yeah, you don't always want to be loud, you don't always want to be quiet, but in reading the room, you have to be handy with the steel, man. Sometimes you got to shoot from the hip. You don't always have to brandish the shit. You don't always have to be waving it around like, hey, hey, yo, I'm fucking uh, CEO. Oh, I'm fucking, uh, <laughs> that's the shit on the CDC. I'm fucking this, I'm, I'm this guy. I'm hella important. I've been in the game for like 20 years. And what, because they've been in the game for 20 years and haven't done dick? What, they got staying power? Nah, nah. Sometimes, seniority doesn't deserve respect. Sometimes, because you've been in the game 20 years, doesn't mean that you're any good at it. Just somebody hasn't knocked you off yet. Somebody hasn't been creative enough to knock you off yet. Especially when you have regulatory protections around your title. Ooh, you feel mighty insulated. That power goes to your head. You start talking. You start talking. You start expressing and moving like a fucking dictator. You, you think you're untouchable. You, you think you can't be retired prematurely without benefits. But hey, a career is only professional, right? And as a professional, sometimes individuals have to come to terms with the repercussions in their personal life that their professional work requires that they bring home wherever the fuck home is with them. Sometimes it requires that they come to term and reconcile with those consequences of their professional actions. 
what their professional actions has on their personal life. In the, in, in the context of where they are in society. Because like I said, they're still humans. There's still people just like you and me inside of corporate doing their damn thing, right? Quote unquote, I'm just doing my job. I got a job to do. But at the same time, being a little overzealous with it, right? Being a little big headed with it, letting the power get to their head. And where they fit in corporate, sometimes, most of the time, does not correlate with where they stand in society at large. Where they stand even in their own network sometimes. That's why, can't let it get to your head. That's why it's best to disenchant yourself from the idea that you're this big and bad guy. Like I said before, I'm already disillusioned. I've disillusioned myself as to who I am or, or, or what I am, but never what I'm capable of as a person. Never. Why? Because it's capability that translates into potential. And it's potential that's able to be manifested. Whether or not you choose to uh, uh, promote your capabilities, whether or not you choose to advertise your potential, it's in that gray area where the game is played. It's in that area where corporate cowboys are made and killed, mind you. It's, it's, in that, it's in that area where corporate cowboys are made and unmade. Professionally, let's say. Allegedly, professionally. <laughs> Get to work, man. Fucking, you got a job to do over here. Acting like you can't divert resources in your own department in your own corporation because you're a fucking cog in the machine over here acting like you're just doing your job get the fuck all right nah have a good weekend man y'all gotta lighten up and wake the fuck up before you get woke woke a woke awoken before you wake up staring into the eyes of somebody who doesn't give a fuck about your position